Okay, so it's been a while and we have a lot to talk about. Good morning, and if you're new here, my name is Johanna. I am a queer knitter living in the southern United States. Um, we're just going to get right into it. This is a knitting podcast. I assume you know that. You clicked on this video. Um, we're going to get into it because I really don't have a lot of time to film this. So I want to just get through it or I'm never going to upload again. Um, if you're wondering what I'm wearing, this is the Keelan vest by Enda Taylor. And I talked about it at length in my last podcast. So we're just going to get into finished objects, which I do have some. So the first finished object I'm going to talk about, I'm considering a fail. Um, not because of the pattern. I thought the pattern was fine, but because of the yarn. I'll talk about why in a minute. But it is the Tolsta Tank, the cami version by Rebecca Klo. Um, really cute pattern. I, I don't know if I'm going to make it again, to be honest with you. So the main issue I had was the yarn I used. It's a beautiful color. It's very soft. Cotton. It's like Pima cotton yarn. I believe it was um, Universal Yarn Co's Supreme Cotton DK, something like that. Um, it's listed on my Ravelry. But this yarn had a ton of knots in the skeins. I'm talking three, four, five knots per skein for a yarn that doesn't even have a lot of yardage to begin with per skein. So this pattern has a very loose. Um, open gauge. You can't really tell on camera, but just trust me on it. Um, and I did gauge swatch. I did get gauge for this. However, because there were so many knots in all of the skeins that I used, I had to constantly cut the yarn and rejoin um, in here. So there are a ton of ends woven in in this garment. And while it looks fine like this right now, when I wear it, it's extremely obvious where all the ends are woven in. Like I'll just turn it in I inside out and show you how many ends there are. Like right there. Like on the sides there's some. On the back there's a ton. And it just becomes really apparent that there's ends woven in there because of how loose the gauge is. So I'm just considering this a loss. I have donated the rest of the yarn to a thrift store. Um, good luck to whoever finds it. Hopefully they have better luck. I think it would be fine if it was in a project that had a tighter gauge, like a more normal gauge for a DK weight yarn. Um, I might in the future try to make the fingering weight version because I feel the, the gauge on that is like more normal. Like I'm knitting a sweater in the same gauge. So I think that would be fine. Um, but I'm just kind of mad at this project now. So I probably won't make that for a long time to be quite frank but that's the first finished object it sucks that I'm never gonna wear it but yep it is what it is shit happens so the next finished object is something that I started and finished between the last podcast and now but it is the poet scarf by sorry Norland and it is an all lace scarf and it is probably one of the prettiest things I've ever made. And I love this color. I made it in the called for yarn, which is a combination of knitting for olive pure silk and knitting for olive um, soft silk mohair. It's two strands held together. And I used the color blood orange, I believe. And like, come on. I loved this pattern so much 
I cast this on on a whim because I just I am in stocking at hell on all of my projects and I just really needed something interesting to work on so I ordered one skein of each of these and I made this and I am currently making another one I'm not gonna talk about it probably um I've got like that much done on it but I'm just making like a shorter version um but there's not much to say about this it's not really cold here to wear a scarf so I've just been wearing it as like a hair scarf if you're intimidated by lace then I would say this is a good beginner lace project it's not a lot of repeats so if you fuck up it's really not that big of a deal um and it's a quick project I did this in like a week I think um honestly you could do it in like two three days but I spread it out over a week but this is so pretty and I'm really happy I made it okay so now we're going to talk about whips um I'm only going to talk about two of the main ones that I've been working on so the first one I'm going to talk about is the Lakes Pullover by Ozetta, and it is looking beautiful. I am probably going to pull out the collar and redo it because it was just, well, first of all, it's flaring out, which absolutely drives me bonkers. So that's the main reason, but also knitting it, I think I could have gone up a needle size um, because I believe the called for needle on this is, um, I believe a five millimeter needle and I'm knitting it on a 4.5 millimeter needle because that's what I got gauge on, which is surprising. Normally if I have to do anything, I have to go up a needle size, but I had to go down. So, um, that was a nice change of pace. Um, the yarn I am using is some yarn that I got from the Wisconsin Sheep and Wool Festival. It is this right here. It is a combination of Lester Long Wool and Merino, and it is from Jubilee Farms. It's from a little farm in Clinton, Illinois. Um, I believe I have their website, which I do think you can now order yarn off of, which is good because I'm a little worried about how much yarn I have left. Um, because of this, um, like the body is supposed to be eight inches of stockinette and then four inches of ribbing. I've got probably. I've probably got about four inches of stockinette right now and this is how much of this yarn I have left and then I have I've got like five more skeins but I still have to do four more inches of stockinette four inches of ribbing and then both sleeves so I'm a little nervous um but if it comes to that my plan is to do all the stockinette and see what kind of yarn I have left. And if I need to order more yarn, I'll do all the ribbing in the new skeins. But these are not dyed skeins. These are just the color of the sheep. So I'm not super worried about like dye lots because there is not really a dye lot. But I do know that like if you like, I think the yarn might look a little different depending on when it was sheared and when it was um spun and everything I don't know I don't know if that's true I might be making that up in my head but if there's a color difference it'll be in the ribbing hopefully um hopefully I won't have to order more yarn that would be ideal but that's that um also I just want to say I am loving this pattern it's very fun to make the only reason I've like put it down for a few weeks now is because I am just doing stock in it in the round. But the construction is very fun. It's a saddle shoulder. So you knit these long shoulders and then you pick up stitches for the back and then you pick up for the front. I believe there's some short rows going on and do the collar. Both of these are on hold right now. 
and then you join under the arms. But I am looking forward to when this is done because it is incredibly soft. So yeah, um, hopefully next time I will have this done, but don't hold your breath. Okay, so the next whip I'm going to talk about is the main thing I've been working on. Um, because I'm so close to finishing this, but it is the Wally Breton sweater by Fable Knitwear, and I'm doing it in all one color in this navy. It often doesn't show up great on camera, but it is very much a true navy color. Um, this is also stocking at hell, so. I've gone through phases with it, um, but I am knitting it basically exactly the pattern. The only modifications I made is I think I made the collar like an inch shorter than it's called for, and I lengthened the body, but lengthening the body is a pretty normal modification that I have to make. Otherwise, I'm doing it exactly uh, to pattern. But it is a construction I've never done before, and it's very fun. Um, it's called a contiguous construction. So it's kind of like a raglan. You just increase along a shoulder seam on either side of the collar, and then you just start increasing for the sleeves instead of increasing for like the body and the sleeves. Um, and you also because Fable Knitwear does very like vintage inspired things. You've got these little sleeve puffs that you make, which I think are very cute. Um, I adore all of her patterns, so no surprise. But I will say I will be doing this construction again. And if I really like it, I will be making another one of these because this is the only sweater, I think, besides a drop shoulder, where I've tried it on and I've raised my arms and it does not budge. It does not raise up all the way above my boobs. It's good. Like, it's such a good length. The only reason I lengthened it is because I'm a perpetual tucker in of shirts. So, um, I'm probably going to be tucking this into like skirts and pants and everything. So I wanted it just like a little bit longer than I normally have everything. Um, but it is so cute. Um, it is two by two rib for the collar. And I did two by two rib for the hem. And um, another cool thing about this is you can do the whole thing in one needle size. The only thing I've changed needle size for this on is for the bind off. Um, I did an Icelandic bind off and I went down, let's see, I'm doing the whole thing on a four millimeter needle. Um, so I went down to a 3.25 needle for the bind off. But I really like this bind off because it is so stretchy, but it also has such a clean, nice edge. It it's literally just looks like a line of like, I don't know, like almost like a little braid. But I think it looks really clean. Big fan of that bind off. I think that's going to be my go-to bind off for binding off hems and binding off collars when you need them to be stretchy but also want them to like look nice so I think that's gonna be my go-to um I'm currently working on sleeve number one um and I normally do sleeves on um 16 inch circulars because normally that's a good amount of sleeve and like, I normally only have to go down to DPNs for, like, the cuffs if there's a lot of decreases. But this is a pretty fitted garment, and the sleeves are pretty fitted. So I just went ahead and ordered 8-inch um, long 4-millimeter uh, DPNs um, because I use DPNs for 
all small circumferences. So this will be a good investment in the long run. It's not bad. It's definitely different from doing socks on deep hands just because there's more fabric like in the way. Um, but I've gotten used to it. Um, I don't have any ladders going on, which is nice. I, so that's what I was worried about because I've never done sleeves on deep hands. But um, yeah, I've done, you can tell back here, done like three decreases so far because I'm just putting in little markers. Um, this pattern calls for three quarter length sleeves. I don't know if I'm going to do that or if I'm going to do long sleeves. We'll see. I was originally intending to do long sleeves and I have this skin and I have a whole nother skin so I'm gonna have a ton of yarn left over either way but um yeah very cute I do also think it would be really cute with short sleeves so maybe one day I'll make a short sleeve version but yeah I am very much enjoying this I always enjoy fable knitwear patterns um I will say that if you like patterns that almost over explain things then you may not love her patterns she does explain everything and i think she explains it pretty well but you do also have to kind of somewhat know what you're doing um and i do often like change how i do the increases because she normally calls for you to just do like a make one left but whenever I'm increasing on like the side of a seam, I always do make one left and make one right. So that's a change I make. Um, I think her short rows are pretty simple to follow. I th think all of her instructions are fairly clear, but I've also been knitting for almost four years now. So I don't know. But like her... Um, her Diagon Alley jumper was the first sweater I ever knit. So take from that what you will. I feel like you can do it. Um, but yeah, that is my only other whip right now. Um, that's a lie. I have like, I think 15 or 16 whips. But these are the only two I'm really working on right now. So we're just going to say it's only these two until they're done. Okay, so I guess we'll talk about acquisitions. I really only have one. I shouldn't have bought it, but if I'm going to drive 45 minutes to the yarn store, then I'm probably going to get at least one skein of yarn. Um, I went to the yarn store because I needed um, stitch holders so that I could put my sleeves on hold. But while I was there, I saw this beautiful yarn. It's West Yorkshire Spinners. and I believe it's called Exquisite Lace, and it is 80% Falkland wool and 20% mulberry silk, and it is so soft, and let me see if there's a color. The color is pearl, um, number 11. It's just like a very true white. There are, let me look at the yardage again. There are 875 yards because it is a lace weight. And my plan for this is to hold this triple and do a collar. Um, I don't remember what the collar is called or who the designer is, but I'll put a picture on the screen and I will um, link it down below. But it's very cute. Um, I believe it's DK weight. Maybe it might be um, worsted. But we're going to hold it triple and see how we get on. Um, and I should have plenty of yarn to do that. So yeah, that is my only acquisition. Um, I should not have bought it, but I did. Because... I'm not going to waste a trip to the yarn store. Um, very pretty. It's so soft. It would be really nice in a garment. But um, I don't have that kind of money. So we're just doing one skein. Very cute. Okay, and that is all I have to talk about today. 
looking at the time, this is probably a very short video, but that's just how it's going to have to be today. Um, if you are curious about what I'm up to and what I'm making, I am them knitted on both Instagram and Ravelry. I upload fairly frequently to my Insta stories. Um, Ravelry doesn't get pictures posted until I'm finished with objects. Um, and then I also occasionally post on my main Instagram grid. But yeah, if you're curious, you can follow me there if you really want to. Um, until next time, I will see you later.